Hey guys, Haley's back, and I'm sorry for jumping out so abruptly last time, but my mom wants me to clean up this room because I'm moving here. But anyway, um, <clears throat> first things first, I think since I'm going to make this quick, I'm going to, instead of continuing with the skeletal structure, I'm going to move on to the next step, which is probably one of the most important steps of all. Well, actually, this is the most important step. Yes, the skeletal structure. So you hear, see how I write skeletal structure? I don't try to be too descriptive because the idea is you want to get your ideas on the page as quickly as you can. Use short forms if you have to. Don't capitalize. Don't worry about any of your spelling. If you make a mistake, just leave it there and come back later. This is your rough ideas thing. So this is how you work. And now, since we are done our pre-planning, we are going to move on to the next step, which is elaborating. Remember, a chapter functions the exact same way as a book. You have a trigger incident, a rising action, a climax, and then a falling action and a resolution. Of course, not all chapters are structured the same, but you should always have a most interesting part of the chapter and the incident that causes the chapter's action to begin. So, here you go. And the idea is that now that we've got our skeletal structure, we want to elaborate on it. So what I usually do is I take all of this and I make it bold. Then I will move below and make it not bold so that I can track how many sentences I've elaborated on. They rush inside, soaking wet. Megan puts her jacket on a nearby hanger, but she looks over at Eric. He hasn't moved an inch. Here we go. <clears throat> the moment the oaken double doors were forced open, The duo practically flung themselves into the estate. <clears throat> Inside, despite inside, it was freezing cold. <clears throat> but not nearly as cold as outside. Megan quickly shed her Megan quickly shed her what kind of coat should I do? Megan quickly shed her cotton petticoat. Her cotton petticoat, as the water was already seeping through, and into her clothes. She spotted a line of clothes hangers, a line of hooks along the walls, <coughs> the walls, and walked over No. I'm not going to describe that she walked because saying that someone walked is a really bad way to describe someone is moving. Along the wall, and she placed her coat upon the leftmost one. Her heels 
clacking against the polished wooden floor. Now here would be a good idea, here would be a good place to start a new chapter. Not, not a new chapter, a new paragraph. Because the idea is that chap paragraphs are separated for, by different ideas. Uh, Megan turned around. Megan turned around pushing her soaked bangs away from her face. <coughs> but when she looked up, she saw Eric hadn't moved an inch. He stood stock still. <sighs> I'm just like yawning so much today. <clears throat> Never mind, I'll just do that later. He stood stock still. Staring his coat his leather jacket he stood stock still staring despite his leather jacket dripping onto the floor. Megan approached. Megan approached. Uh, approached quickly. Eric, don't just stand there, she said. Take off your coat. You're going to catch a cold. Eric did not respond. Megan tilted her head. Approaching a little more cautiously. Eric. Eric, she, she said quietly. When Eric spoke, he did not look at her. No, Logan, stay out. I will be finished soon enough. Just stay out. Do not interrupt my video, please. When Eric spoke, he did not look at her. It's, it's empty. And you see, you can modify your own dialogue to fit the actions and emotions of a character. Now here, I'm going to pause for a moment because I think I've gone far enough. So now we're going to move on to 
to the next step, which is review. The biggest thing you want to worry about if you want your work to look professional. So here is where you will look over your work and make it look good. So first of all, to make it easier and break this up into sections, we're just going to put extra spaces in between these words. Well, actually, no. I think instead of doing that, I'm just going to put the indentations in front, which is something you should also do. Use Megan, and there's another indentation. So indent the entire thing so that you can more easily break up where the paragraph starts. The moment the oaken double doors were forced open, the duo practically flung themselves into the estate. That is perfectly grammatically correct. Inside, it was freezing cold. See, I put the comma beside inside. So that is good grammar. Now sometimes, sometimes, not always, if there's a but, you should not have a comma in front of it. But you can, sometimes you can do that. So it depends if you want to say, inside, it was freezing cold, but not nearly as cold as outside. So it depends. Or you could say, inside, it was freezing cold, but not nearly as cold as outside. So I think I'm going to keep that comma out. Megan quickly shed her cotton petticoat as the water and this is another mistake I made. You see, I should not have put a comma there because there is not a pause that needs to be there. Megan quickly shed her pot, her cotton petticoat as the water was already seeping through and into her clothes. She spotted a line of hooks along the wall and she placed her coat upon the leftmost one. Now I, because I'm curious, should check is leftmost correctly spelled, which, surprisingly enough, it is. Her heels clacking against the polished wooden floor. This, we have established, is all grammatically correct. Now we move on to the next part. Megan turned around, pushing her soaking bangs away from her face. But when she... And now I believe this is an appropriate part to put a comma in because you are changing ideas, not presenting a contrast. You shouldn't use commas before but when you're pre presenting a contrast, as in saying, where was it? <laughs> mm. It was freezing cold, but not as cold as outside. That is a contrast. This is a change in ideas. She pushed her bangs away from her face, but when she looked up. But when she looked up. And this should also be erased. So, but when she looked up, she saw Eric hadn't moved an inch. He stood stock still, staring. Despite his leather jacket. See, I didn't want to say he was staring despite something. So here, if I want to have a comma, I might as well add something in here. Staring. Mm. Not moving. I know I said I he hadn't moved an inch, but I feel it's okay to repeat it over here. The thing you want to watch out most of all in your writing is you want to you want to watch out for repetitions too frequently, and you want to watch out for these things. I will make a video eventually about grammar and stuff, but here is just a how to make a chapter thingy. Megan approached quickly. Eric, don't just stand there, she said. Now here we have a half correction. This is correct. This should be lowercase, but this should be a comma. The idea is that imagine the brackets. Imagine the quotations don't exist. So then she would be saying, Eric, don't just stand there, she said. But if you have the period there, that would be, Eric, don't just stand there, she said. 
you will only use a period, an example, you will only use a period if, um, hello, she held, hello, she held out her hand. But you will not use a period in this example. Hello, she said, holding out her hand. See the difference? I'm not quite sure why, but basically it's um, not how you write a sentence. So imagine this is all one sentence. Imagine the quotation marks don't exist. You would not put a period in between those things. Now she continues, take off your coat. You're going to catch a cold. Right here, I can replace this period with a semicolon. The way I've learned is that a semicolon is put in a place where either a period or a comma can, can be placed. So take off your coat. You're going to catch a cold. Now, <clears throat> this can be, it can be this way or it can be this way, but neither way sounds exactly right. So it would be best if you put a semicolon there. Semicolons are likely the most confusing thing when it comes to writing and grammar and whatever, but they're really useful when you have a problem like not knowing whether to put a comma or a period. That's another tip. You're going to catch a cold. So here, after a semicolon, you do not capitalize. Eric did not respond. That is perfectly grammatically correct. Megan tilted her head, approaching a little more cautiously. Eric, she said quietly, and here, despite there being a question mark, you should also put a lowercase she instead of one. So basically saying, if you are to say he said, she said afterwards, you always keep it lowercase. And then quietly, an adverb. When Eric spoke, he did not look up at her. Now, I don't believe this comma should be removed. I believe this is perfectly grammatically correct because it indicates a pause in the sentence. See, this is the thing. When it comes to commas, you can or cannot. Some people won't be quite as critical because when it comes to commas, there are no exact rules for them. But there are always different ways you can go and different people do things different ways. So don't be quite so hard on yourself when it comes to your grammar, when it comes to punctuation due to grammar. So basically, <clears throat> what we have done here, what I have just done to show you guys is I have taken this, this, and I have turned it into this. The next thing you want to do, because any good book does this, is you want to take your font and change it to Times New Roman because it's just the most official looking font for a book. So now you have Times New Roman. And Times New Roman is um, smaller than most other fonts, so you might want to turn the size up. You can adjust, this is at least for Google Docs, you can, you can adjust the amount of line space in books, it depends. I don't have a book here, so I can't look. Wait, do I? I think I do. Yes, every book is formatted differently, so it depends. Yeah, books usually don't, usually only have single spaces between the lines. So you want to use a single space, but you want your words to... Mm, you could at least put it to 13 size font. There, that is perfect. The next thing you want to do, which I think is one of the most quintessential tools that I find is really cool, especially because I had no clue it existed before now, uh, is the justify tool. And when you click this, it turns into that. See how that works? That way you've got a clean edge to your page. You can also do stuff like, 
Well, if you have a really long word over here on this side, what you could do is you could, you know how books have at one point of the paragraph, a word stops halfway through, has a dash, and then it continues on the next page. You could do that, but there are no extremely long words here. So I think we are good. So we have turned this, they rush inside, soaking wet. Megan puts her jacket on a hanger nearby. When she looks over at Eric, he hasn't moved an inch. Megan, Eric, don't just stand there. Take off your coat. You're going to get a cold. Eric does not respond. Curious, Megan approaches him. Megan says unle uneasily, Eric. Eric finally speaks. It's empty. We have taken that and we have turned it into... The moment the, dub the oaken double doors were forced open, the duo practically flung themselves into the estate. Inside, it was freezing cold, but not nearly as cold as outside. Megan quickly shed her cotton petticoat, as the water was already seeping through into her clothes. She spotted a line of hooks along the wall, and she placed her coat upon the leftmost one, her heels clacking against the polished wooden floor. When she moved... You should always look over your writing, not just for grammatical stuff, but also for things you can add. Because saying that her heels clacked against the floor sounds oddly out of place and unnecessary unless you mention that she is walking while her heels are clacking. Megan turned around, pushing her soaked bangs away from her face. It's a detail showing that she is soaked. You want to make the readers visualize, so using the fact that she is pushing her soaked bangs away from her face, for one, creates an easy transition between this and this, and also helps the readers visualize how the scene is playing out. But when she looked up and saw Eric, when she looked up, she saw Eric hadn't moved an inch. Now I may or may not add a comma here. Yes, that looks right. Chances are, if it looks right, it's correct. She saw Eric hadn't moved an inch. See, it's totally okay to use exact wording from your basic skeletal structure. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't bag on yourself for this. He stood stock still, staring, not moving despite his leather jacket dripping onto the floor. Megan approached quickly. Eric, don't just stand there, she said. Take off your coat. You're going to catch a cold. Eric did not respond. Megan tilted her head, approaching a little more cautiously. Eric, she said quietly. Eric's, when Eric spoke, he did not look at her. It's, it's empty. And now another thing I noticed that I can change is since we have an adverb here and an adverb here, there is not much space between those two adverbs. So I think instead of saying she approached a little more cautiously, I'm going to say she approached, approaching with a little more caution. There we go. Megan tilted her head, approaching with a little more caution. Eric, she said quietly. See, this is how you do it. Another thing you can do if you want to is you can take words, if a word, like a, if a, um, if an adjective or an adverb or something like that comes up too often, there are things online that will scan your work to see how often something comes up in it, but if a word comes up too often, you can always come up, uh, you can always use thesaurus.com and come up with some syn synonyms to come up with, to replace the ones so that it doesn't look quite as repetitive. So there you have it. That is, that is how you should write your chapters. You want to have, you want to have an intro, a trigger incident, rising action, Climax, falling action, and then, meh, and then a resolution. Now, remember, not all chapters are made the same. 
Some people like to end their chapters at the climax. That is what we call a cliffhanger. And some chapters don't have a resolution, like mine. It wouldn't have a resolution because the problem is not being solved. The problem is being created. So that was just a little idea to show you how I kind of work. I will make another video explaining grammar and stuff, but first, just like, look at all of this. Look at how we have accomplished. The whole idea of this is to make it so much easier. One, purpose of chapter. Figure out where you're, what the last chapter would be leading up to and figure out where you want this next chapter to lead. Then identify the purpose of your chapter. Building suspense through scary atmosphere to put the reader on edge. And see how doing that would benefit the story. The whole thing I love about writing is that you can manipulate your characters, your scene, anything to manipulate your your reader's emotions. I know that makes me sound like a sociopath, but it's true. I love doing things that manipulate my reader's emotions. I love to make them feel sad. I love to make them feel scared. I love to annoy the hell out of them with a villain who is a hypocrite. But basically, yeah, that's, that's basically how I write a book. So... If you guys, oh right, never mind. I was gonna go through the rest of the steps. Chain of events. Write down a brief chain of events to explain what is going to happen where. Now, if you want to, you can use this and write down this at the beginning of your chain of events thingy so that you can figure out, first of all, you can figure out um, by putting in the intro the incident, the rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution, and then you can fill in the events that happen in between. It would be so much easier. What I think makes a chapter best is when you look at it systematically and logically. And also a little bit emotionally. So you want to do that, then you take that and you bring it down to skeletal structure. You take the situations that are happening and you want to add a little bit more detail as to what's happening, what is being said, and how the characters are feeling. But you want to do it in bare bones minimum so that you can get all of your ideas, all of the inspiration that's rushing through your mind onto the paper as quickly as you can. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to write this skeletal structure because once this is done, trust me, you finish the uphill journey. It's all downhill from here in a good way. Once you have that, you just take the things and elaborate upon it so that you can make it seem more detailed, make the words flow better. You can add detail that explains what things look like. Remember to use when you're describing five senses. Sight, sound, taste, touch, and hearing. When they rush inside, they are soaking wet. Here, I could... Uh... The double oaken doors were flung open and they flung themselves inside. It's freezing cold. That is a sensation. Uh, she spots a line of hooks. That is sight. She hears her heels clacking against the floor. There is no smell in here because sometimes adding all the five senses described too quickly and not spread out enough can make it seem a little bit cliche and prose-like. So don't always use all five of the senses. Use three and then get to the other senses later. And next, you can take that. We finally take our skeletal structure, elaborate upon it that has been elaborated upon, and we fix it up. Here, look at this. We've got a 13 font, Times New Roman, justified, indented, and everything's great. So don't worry. This should help you in how you plan your chapter. As for how to plan a book, I'll get to that later. But anyway, now, guys, that was, uh, that was my video on how to plan a chapter. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that little bell so you can get notifications when we make new videos. Now... Um, I'm still looking for an editor who can add music to my videos. That would be very helpful. It would also be helpful if I could have an editor who could not only do that, but also combine videos together. Like, have one clip and then the next clip. It, that would be just so great. Or a person who can also 
combine, who can also create a video by taking a picture I send them and combining it with an audio set. So that's what I need right now. And anyway, guys, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, blah, blah, blah. Give me suggestions for next videos. I have a lot of top 10 video ideas planned out, and I think you're going to like them. But until then, next time, um, guys, uh, this is Unscripted Haley flying out.